Hey everybody, Space Cat here. I help game dev noobs learn how to make awesome games using Pico 8. And this is the third video in a little series about making a very simple farming game. And we're kind of making it together. We're coming up with some ideas together and just kind of building it as we go, which isn't necessarily the most efficient way to build a game, but it is really fun. And it's been so great hearing your suggestions for what we do next. So far, we have a little robot guy and he floats around and he can plant seeds in the ground. And after just a little bit of time, carrots start to grow. And we set up a little way to add all of these little patches to a table or an array. And they all have their own little timer. And after a while, each of them will grow a carrot. But that's really all that's going on. We got some great suggestions. Here somebody said, just got started learning. I guess the next step is the inventory slot and stuff. That's a great idea. I think inventory totally makes sense. Someone else said a growth time randomizer. That's a great idea too. Somebody suggested collecting carrots and returning them to a crate. And after a while they'll be sold. You get money that lets you buy seeds, enlarge the crates, plow, sow, harvest, or an easier variant where you exchange vegetables. Great idea. I love the crate idea. We'll probably go with that for actually selling things because that seems nice and simple. A couple of people said integrating a watering can and the seeds don't grow unless you use the watering can. Awesome. Logic for harvesting fully grown carrots. You can add seeds and coin to the player's pocket, which would be like an inventory. These are all awesome suggestions. And keeping with the theme of this series, we're going to do a very, very, very simple version of some of this stuff. And then, you know, maybe make it more complex later. I think an obvious next step is going to be harvesting these carrots, because right now we can't do anything after this. And so we got to be able to pick up these carrots and put them in an inventory, or maybe we could automatically sell them. I think let's just put them in our inventory for this video. We're going to try and pick up a carrot and we'll have some kind of UI here that counts the amount of carrots that we have. And then we'll get more complicated and add stuff in the future. So what we're going to need to do is detect if our little guy is over one of the carrot tiles. And if we are, and it's a full carrot, then we hit a button and then that gets rid of the tile and then it adds a carrot to our inventory and we'll need a way to display the inventory. So that's already a bunch of stuff for just this one little piece of functionality. So let's do it. So we have three tabs here. Zero is our normal game loop. We have tab one, which has our player movement and our ability to plant seeds. And this is where we're going to detect what kind of tile we're on. And so let's say if button PX, we're only going to plant a carrot if if we're over a sprite with this, let's say um, the second flag. So flag one. So we're going to say if F get, which is flag get, and then we need a sprite number, which we'll use M get for, and then that's going to be PTX comma PTY, and then we need the flag, which is one then. So this is going to say if we're over a tile that has a flag set to one, so that's either going to be our grass or a blank tile, then we're going to do all this that we were doing. Let's make sure this works. Save, run. Yep, works great. Does it work on the grass? Yep. Okay, but it doesn't work on the carrots. And then these carrots should still grow. Perfect. Always good to make sure that you didn't mess something up. So if that's a thing, then we're going to do this. Else if, and we'll do all of this, but we're going to test for a different flag. Let's test for flag two. Then we're going to collect a carrot. So flag two is going to be right here. Ironically, the third flag, but it says down here in the red part right here, flag two, and we're going to collect a carrot. We also need to delete this from the array and replace the tile. Oh boy. So let's use this M set. Let's delete it. So we're going to go back to like zero. So let's make sure that works. So if there's a carrot, we can go through here and delete the carrots. And we're going to need to delete the seed that is at that location, which boy, that's actually a little more complicated than I thought. We're going to have to loop through all of our seeds here. So for S in all seeds, and we're going to have to test if this SX equals PTX. Boy, okay. If S dot SX equals PTX and S dot SY equals PTY then. So what we're doing is we're looking up to see if there is a seed with the coordinates that we were just over. Then we need to delete from seeds 
S. Boy. Okay. So that is getting rid of the seed in our seeds array, which we can't even see. So I'm not even sure if this is, if we'll be able to see if it works. We'll need a way to kind of display this array to make sure it works. So real quick, let's just do like a debug thing. Let's see for S in all seeds to print S dot S X. Let's just say that. Okay. Run. Okay. So this is putting out some of the seeds and we have our X value of each of our seeds here. And so it thinks that there are four entries, one, two, three, four, this 300 was from earlier. So now if I go and harvest a carrot, Ooh, yeah, it's not working. We have flag two set. Oh, okay. And let's try this out. We can go and we can delete these carrots that we already had. And when the carrot grows, we go here and it still doesn't work. The reason it's not working is because actually we kind of figured this out accidentally. We're checking to see if the tile location that we're storing for this little seed patch equals where the player is and it is giving us a float every time. And what we really need to be doing is rounding this. So let's actually, where we say SX equals PTX, let's do this, let's round it. Let's do a floor PTX. And gosh, I think that would work just fine. Let's see if that works. Save run. So now this is eight, eight, seven. Ooh, I bet that's gonna work now. So again, we can do this. We can get rid of these carrots. And then when we have the fully grown carrots, ooh, that doesn't work still. Hmm, why doesn't that work still? Because we need to floor our PTX here too. There we go. Save run. Those problems are usually something to do with rounding and decimals and floats and all that junk. So now, bloop, yeah. And if we see up here, we have two eights, bloop, bloop. All right, let's make sure it's getting rid of the right one. We have a four, six, an eight, 10, and a 12. So four, six, eight, 10, 12. And now if we're over, let's see, this is before six, eight. That gets rid of eight. Let's get rid of 12. Let's get rid of four. Let's get rid of six. Let's get rid of 10. Oh baby, it's working. Okay, so that was actually kind of a lot of work just to get rid of the seed patch. And then it sets this back to zero. And so it essentially undoes everything that we did here. So we can plant things and we can take them up, but nothing actually happens. So we have to add something to our inventory here. So let's make a really basic inventory. And let's say I, I N V for inventory and then you, INV and then DINV. Okay, this is gonna be our inventory stuff. And let's put this in our game loop here. View inventory. Let's draw the inventory over everything else. Okay, so now we should still play and everything's okay. Great. Let's also get rid of our crop timer here. We don't need that anymore. Okay, so for our inventory, let's make a table and let's just say uh, INV equals just a blank array, blank table, and update inventory. I'm not sure if we're gonna even add anything to that yet but I think we'll need a function where we add something to our inventory. Let's just say um, harvest, maybe. Let's harvest and then let's just call that good for now. Let's just say harvest. And so what that'll do is add to our inventory something. We'll have to have something that represents a carrot. So why don't we just, again, keep it really simple. We have a carrot sprite here, sprite 18. Let's just say, let's just add the number 18 for now, okay? Really, really simple. Eventually, we're going to probably pass that into here as an argument and have some different logic and everything, but we're going to add the number 18 to our inventory. Then for draw inventory, let's just draw a picture of our carrot. So that's sprite 18. So let's do sprite 18 and let's do it maybe in the bottom corner. So that's going to be like, let's do like 118 on the X and 118 on the Y. And that should just draw a little carrot in the bottom here, right? Yeah, there's our little carrot in the bottom. Let's actually put it in the top, maybe. Let's put this in like 10, too much, maybe like two. So there's our carrot here in the upper right. And let's draw how many carrots we have. Let's say print. And for now, we'll just print zero. And we're gonna do that at, let's say 110, and then like four down maybe, save run. So there's a zero next to this. Let's do this a little more over, save and run. Yeah, so there's a zero right there. Let's make this white, which is color seven, save run. Okay, so now there's a white zero next to our carrot. And I actually think I want the carrot to the left of that. So let's maybe move this over 14 and let's make this 106 maybe, 104. Yeah, and we'll bring our carrot down one. Yeah, that looks nice. So now we have a little counter for our carrots and Eventually, we're going to have to go through and find how many carrots we have, or we need to make 
just a variable for our carrots. Um, I don't actually know if I want to do the inventory thing yet. We can probably just say carrots equals zero. And we'll just, we'll do this in another video. We'll, we'll add a more crazy inventory because we don't need to get that crazy, do we? So let's just say carrots plus equals one. And here we're going to print carrots, okay? So we have harvest. When we call harvest, it adds one to our carrots. We're starting our carrots at zero, and then we're drawing our carrots in the upper right. So when we harvest these crops, let's just say harvest. Boom, right here. Save, run. Okay, so we should be able, once we plant some seeds, after they grow, got all these carrots, we should be able to go through. And it, look at this beauty. It's like so, that's how game development is, man. It's so complicated. And all it does is it deletes the carrot and it adds one here. But the magic that's happening here is when we go over one of these tiles, we're figuring out where the player is, we're rounding it to the nearest tile, and then when I hit X, we're looking up this tile in an array of all of our crops that are planted on our farm, looking it up, deleting it, getting rid of this tile, and replacing it with grass, and then adding a carrot to our inventory. All of that happens within one frame here. And it's beautiful. Now we have eight carrots. Oh boy, we can get crazy. Ooh, but here's the thing. We can just do this and just spam the carrots. <laughs> oh boy. That's because I turned off our else if that was testing if it's the right flag because I got really confused here and stopped the recording for a minute. So now, yeah, I can't do that. Great. But I should still be able to harvest a carrot. We'll just cheat and go to these carrots. These seem to work. And this still deletes from the array and everything. Great. So to review, we have kind of a big honking thing here. When we press X, before we were just automatically doing this part right here. We were just setting a grass tile to a seed tile, and then we were adding a table to our seeds table. Now we're checking to make sure that that is a blank tile that we can actually plant on and doing that. And if it's not, we're gonna test and see if it has flag two, which means that there's a carrot growing. And if that's a thing, then we're gonna collect a carrot by setting the tile back to blank, harvesting it, which is gonna be a little more robust soon, but right now it's just adding a carrot to our carrots. And then we're going through and looking up any seed in our seeds table that has the exact same location as our player and deleting it. Baby, I'm so proud of this. This is so cool. Bloop, 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 bloop. The hand is harvesting time. Yes, we collect carrots. I also wanted to show you guys this. This is so cool. This looks like my screen, but this is a GIF screenshot from one of the students in our Pico 8 course that's been following along. And he made his own little like animated robot guy and he kind of squishes when he plants things and he added a little shadow and everything. This is so exciting. What a cool little twist to this. I love when people are inspired to make stuff, man. This, this just made my day. So Tony, good work, man. This is so awesome. Tony's been having a lot of fun in my Pico 8 class. Pico 8 Noob to Pro. And if you're just getting started in Pico 8, that's a great course that will teach you the basics of game development using Pico 8. And it's a lot of fun. We make our own platformer game and we learn all the basic stuff you need to start making your own games in Pico 8. Make sure to check it out, spacecatdev.com. There's a link in the description. Whew, but this is fun. We collect carrots. What should come next after we collect these carrots? What's after that? Do we wanna do a watering can? Do we wanna do like better inventory? Do we wanna sell things? Tell me what you think and I'll catch you on the flip side.